The Tasmanian devil is a tough creature with a fierce reputation. In its natural habitat, it has no predators. Yet devil numbers have plummeted to about 10% of the original population in just a few years. Cancerous facial tumors are driving the species to the brink of extinction. But there is hope, thanks to the remarkable work being done by the Save the Tasmanian Devil organization. Tasmania, an island off mainland Australia and home to the Tasmanian Devil, a solitary scavenger and hunter. Tasmanian devils are the world's largest carnivorous marsupials, and they eat just about anything. Powerful jaws allow them to easily chew through skin, flesh, and bone. Because of this, they play a vital role in the ecosystem, helping to clear away carcasses which could spread disease. But Tasmanian devils are not immune to one disease. Discovered in 1996, devil facial tumor disease almost decimated the population. It's a communicable cancer that only affects devils. It's spread by bites and by eating infected tissue and being fairly aggressive creatures, both at food sources and during mating, it spreads like wildfire and kills within six months. The race to save the Tasmanian devil is being fought aggressively in a desperate bid to save them from the same fate as the thylacines. Thylacines, or Tasmanian tigers, were also carnivorous marsupials that shared habitat with the devils and were their main competition in the food chain. It's thought they went extinct in the early 20th century. To stop this from happening, the Save the Tasmanian Devil program was set up by the Australian and Tasmanian governments. Their main goal is to maintain a genetically diverse and healthy population of Tasmanian devils in the wild. To do this, wild populations have to be monitored. Every year between April and July, eight sites in the state of Tasmania are revisited to update records and see how the wild population is doing. But we do uh, collect data from animals and samples from animals for researchers um, at the University of Cambridge as well as the University of Sydney. The majority of them are sites that we have historical data for so that we have that comparison with what we're seeing now and we can tell whether the population looks like it's trending down towards local extinction, whether it's maintaining a static trend or whether it's trending upwards towards um, an improvement in, in abundance. Traps are set out at specific locations, and when a devil is caught, it's measured, checked, and microchipped. There's a problem with this devil, though. It's got the disease, and a pouch full of babies. Sorry, sweetheart. And that's a boy. So when we, we get to this point, if she didn't have pouch young, I would right. probably take her to a vet and euthanize her. Right. But she's already losing condition, and it's a pretty nasty tumour. We want to give her a chance. Right. Um, so she's going to den these in August. She's got a few months ahead of her. Um, the amazing thing with devils we find is that they will hold on and hold on and hold on when they've got young and just keep going. And the thing is, if she can get them to a certain level of independence, even if it's not right to where what's ideal, right. they can often get out there yeah, and fend for themselves, yeah. One of the biggest problems caused by devil tumor disease is that it's compromised the genetic diversity of wild devils, which is why the Save the Tasmanian Devil Foundation has created an insurance population of devils at various facilities dotted in the country, like this one, The health of captive devils also needs to be closely monitored. And this one is definitely not impressed by his imminent checkup. These captive bred animals are the genetic safety net. And fortunately, devils breed well in captivity.
some of the disease-free devils are released into geographically isolated areas. While a cure for the disease is not currently known, some promising research into a vaccine is being done. But the cancer is not the only threat to devils. There's no doubt that devil facial tumor disease is the biggest thing knocking the numbers of devils. The next biggest one would be roadkill, and we're targeting that. So our roads are quick, our roads are windy, therefore devils don't see cars come in and they get run over. So we run a hotline to deal with this. We've found recently that devils are falling into old mine shafts, of which there are tens of thousands in Tasmania. So we've got a program now to try and find these mine shafts and see what we can do about them. Dogs are always a problem for devils. Tasmania has lots of little shack villages where people go for their summer holidays and their long weekends. And on Easter weekend, we've usually got lots of devils that have just weaned running around. Everybody turns up with their dogs. The dogs knock out the cohort that exists for that year in any one population. The Save the Tasmanian Devil program is not limited to Tasmania and Australia. There's a worldwide network of partner organizations. Zoos, like the Toledo Zoo in Ohio, USA, is part of an ambassador program that aims to raise awareness of the plight of the Tasmanian Devil, as well as help with financial aid and resources. A microchip on its own is $5 each. So if you catch several hundred devils in a trip, that's quite a lot of money. So the funding that Toledo is providing for this program means that we're guaranteed this program can continue for the next five years. It's no secret that in the past, the Tasmanian devil was not in line to win any popularity contests. But thanks to the work being done, their public image is definitely improving. When I started working on the Tassie Devil, it was a very lonely thing to stick up for this animal. It was maligned, it was persecuted, it was treated as a pest by the majority of the agricultural sector. The best thing about devil facial tumor disease is it has given Tasmania ownership of the devil, which is a good thing. It raised the profile of the animal. It's good that Tasmanians have realized what they've got. It's also a wake up call to realize that when we bring the devil back, which we will, that this will start again. Conservation work in Tasmania will always be an ongoing challenge, but as long as people are aware of these problems and the populations are monitored, the Tasmanian devil can be assured of a future. <laughs>